Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have an example where we're given h and x. We're given that the sag is 3 meters and that the span is 9 meters, which means h, which represents the sag, is 3 meters, and x, which is half the span, is of course then half of 9 meters, which is 4.5 meters. We're given the tension of the cable at the high point, it's 200 times g, which does not necessarily represent the weight of the whole cable. We're supposed to find the length of the cable and find the weight per unit length of the cable. All right, how do we do that? Well, we need to use the technique used when we're given h and x. We're going to start with this equation right here. y is equal to c times a hyperbolic cosine of x over c. And we're going to then substitute for y h plus c because notice we're not given y, we're given x and h, so let's replace y by h plus c. h plus c is equal to c times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. And then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by c. When we do that, we get h over c plus 1 is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. Now notice in this equation, we know both h and x. We don't know c, and we're going to use the method of iteration to find the value for c here, so we can find y, s, and everything else we're looking for. So what we'll do here is we'll put some values, some estimated values for c, then we have to calculate h over c plus 1, and then we have to calculate the hyperbolic cosine of x and c. All right, what value should we figure out here? For c, let's see, if h is 3 and x is 4.5, well, let's try the value for 3. 3 for c, so h is 3, 3 divided by 3 plus 1 is 2. And notice we're looking for the value for c such that h over c plus 1 is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. So with x being 4.5 and c being 3, that's uh, 1.5, take the hyperbolic cosine, and we get 2.352. Well, that's close. These are close, but this is a little bit larger. So let's see here. Let's try for a larger value for 4 that will drop the value here. Make it closer. Let's see what we get. Let's try 4. Now we have 4 divided by, well, h is 3 divided by 4. That's 3 quarters plus 1, which is 1 and 3 quarter, 1.75. And now we take x divided by 4. x is 4.5, so 4.5 divided by 4. Take the hyperbolic cosine of that, and we get 1.702. So here, this was larger than that. I made this larger, now this is smaller than that. I mean, I made it a little bit too large, so let's drop back a little bit. How about 3.9? And we have h divided by c, cosine h of that, and we get 1.7429, 7.429. Let's see here, we went from 4 to 3.9, this was smaller than this, and this is still smaller than that, not by much. So let's go down just a little bit more. How about 3.89? Is that good enough? Let's see here, let me see. The difference here was 0.05. The difference here is, hmm, 0.25, yeah, hmm. 0.7674. Let me try 3.8, see what happens. I'm going to go 3.8 and see what happens. All right. And that gives so us eight, which is three. 1.7870, Ah, that was a good choice because I'm very close now. This was smaller than this. It is still smaller than that, but I'm very, very close now. Now I think I'll go down by 1, 100. Let's try 3.79. Okay, 3.79, we have 1.7917. Wow, that's really close. 
close enough for our purpose here. So we're going to let C equal to 3.79. So C is equal to 3.79. So now we know H, we know H, we know X, we know C. Now we need to find Y. Y is H plus C. So since Y is H plus C and H is equal to 3, and c is equal to 3.79, that means that y is equal to 6.79 meters. Why did I find y first? Because y will allow us to find s using this equation. We now can say that y squared is equal to s squared plus c squared, or s is equal to the square root of y squared minus c squared which is equal to the square root of 6.79 squared minus c, which is 3.79 squared. And so s is equal to 6.79 squared minus 3.79 squared equals, take the square root, and we have s is equal to 5.63 meters. And we know that the length of the cable is twice s, so therefore, I can say that the length, which is equal to 2 times s, is equal to 11.27 meters. So now we have the first answer we were looking for. The length is equal to 11.27 meters. Now we're trying to find the weight per unit length. Hmm. The weight per unit length is right here, and if we're given t, which we are, and we know y, we can actually find the weight per unit length. So the weight per unit length via that equation is equal to the tension at the high point divided by y, which is equal to 200 times g divided by y, which was 6.79. So 200 times 9.8 divided by 6.79 equals, and we have 288, well, make it 89, we'll round it off to the nearest Newton, Newton per meter. Let's see if that makes sense. This is about 2,000, the tension is about 2,000, and the weight of the cable would be this times uh, the total length of this, so about 7 times 3 to 2100, so that's in the ballpark, so that's a reasonable answer. So I would say that 289 newtons per meter is relatively close to the correct answer, so we know the weight per unit length and the length of the cable, and that's how we do that.